What's up, fight fans? This is Kurt Deville with Counterpunch Boxing News, and I have some new news, some good news concerning Josh Taylor, Jack Catterall, two times. Here is the breakdown, okay? Uh, round one, Catterall came out the same he did in the first fight. Bat, 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 bat. Same thing. No change. Josh Taylor pawing with his jab, not establishing the distance, following Jack around. Jack round one. Round two, same thing. More so more because Jack started to open up more. One twos, one two threes, one two three fours, one 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 ones. Those jabs, quip, doubling, uh, tripling, quadrupling the jab to Jack's. Jo uh, 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 Taylor's face round three Jack kind of took a little time off and uh, Josh landed a good left hand round four same back into action jab 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 le overhand left you know um, then he started throwing uppercuts in there rounds five same thing Taylor not jabbing with the guy that established his jab Josh Taylor same thing. Jab, jab, jab to the right hand. Round six, same shit. We had Jack Catterall pretty much establishing the jab. Round, right, jab, 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 left hands, right hands. Taylor had a clash of heads. You know, they've done that a couple times in this fight. Uh, that wasn't cool. I think that was probably the best offensive weapon that Josh Taylor had, right? <laughs> because... I mean, he was just following this guy around. He was loading up punches. He's throwing one punch at a time, you know, and he wasn't landing, most importantly, you know, so he's trying to do what he was trying to do. Uh, round seven, okay, round seven was interesting because Jack started going to the body and he hurt Josh Taylor, but it was at the end of the round, okay, and then he started putting those punches together and the way Catterall's combinations was landing on Josh Taylor with the high guard was really no head movement from Taylor. That was the problem too. Taylor was just getting caught open season. Any man puts his guard up, that means it's open season to attack anywhere around this perimeter. Because those are not going to stop every punch that that is thrown at you just because you have your hands up. It's not an illusion, people. It's not going to exempt anybody. You know what I mean? So they can come around that guard around that guard right so come around that guard and you know and you're doing this you're getting caught everywhere ear you know you could get caught you know throw your balance off that type of stuff you know so understand that's what that was round eight more of the same i think taylor i think taylor won round eight you know because catterall decided to take a break round nine uh same thing in round nine round ten Okay, um, Catterall looked like he took another break. Round 11, Catterall caught Taylor with an overhand left that Taylor, he weaved right into. He didn't even weave into it. He landed into it. He went head first into the straight left. He gets caught and they do a little hug of war and they both fall to the ground, which was kind of dumb. Catterall didn't jump on him, which that angered me personally because I'm like, Jack, you have got robbed where you was beating this guy with a knockdown before. So, you know, that should have been an urgent, okay, this is what I plan to do from the first place. And, the, and you know, and, you know, and, and the round 12, uh, I think actually Taylor won round 12. And it made me wonder like, okay, well, what was Jack thinking? You know, and I, and I see that happening to Jack again. Jack won, people. Oh, he won. But and he won because he was at home. But understand, not every fight that you're going to fight and you do a good job or a good counter yourself, you're going to win or you're going to be favored to win. See, this is boxing. This ain't a points thing that, hey, well, you won, you made these points and you've accumulated these points. So guess what? You win. That's not boxing. Okay? Because he outlanded him in the first fight with a knockdown. So, you know, and uh, Taylor felt he did better because he didn't get dropped. But he could have. You know, and like with Taylor, of course, thinking he won. Uh, Bob Arum came with an explosion, which I have a totally different video for you guys 
Hilarious, bro. Um, Bob Aram, bro, you got to give it up to Bob. Bob is old and don't care, but I will take you there on another video. But no, good display. Uh, great boxing by Jack Catterall. Uh, Josh Taylor, you know, didn't have anything for him. You know, people were still saying that this could have been a draw. I'm like, what fight were you watching, sir or ma'am? Because I didn't see that at all. I seen a guy that used his jab and could have just won with his jab, but he used a lot more than that. And he hurt him with body shots. So, you know, I, I think what uh, Jack needs to learn, he needs to learn, he needs to start knocking these guys out, especially if he wants to go abroad. I think he let his, con his guard down because he was at home. And I don't think that was the right idea to do anyway because, you know, that may be what Josh Taylor did. Let his guard down. I'm at home. I'm not losing to anybody outside of Scotland. I'm not losing to a foreigner. I'm at the house. You know what I mean? So, yeah. It, so, I don't think two wrongs make a right. I don't think those guys should have been complacent. I think that Jack Catterall should have come to make a statement because he should be a man against, you know, like fighting the power against uh, uh, the sanctioning bodies and the corruption of boxing by knocking that guy out, by taking it to Josh Taylor, by stopping Josh Taylor. Those type of things that should have took place. Okay. But no, it was a good fight. I'm glad I covered it. I appreciate uh, you guys in the trenches with me, you know, on my live stream. And, you know, we was in the trenches together watching a nice fight between two rivals. Josh Taylor says, let's do it a third time because, you know, okay, you won the first one and the second one. You know, maybe he just wants a payday or something to redeem himself. But no, Josh Taylor's lost. If he's 33, that's actually quite young, to, you know, and on top of, he hasn't had maybe, what, 20 fights, right? 20, 21 fights in his career. So you had to wonder, like, okay, well, what's going on with Taylor? You know what I'm saying? Does he need more train? Does he need a different trainer? Does he need a, a, a change of scenery? Because he's not looking like the same fighter that he was before. That guy that came over here and whooped Jose Ramirez, that dude. <clears throat> Great fight, by the way, but this ain't, that particular Josh Taylor. <clears throat> this Josh Taylor is totally different. So if he feels that he can't do it or press the gas no more, not everyone, you know, uh, 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 expires at the same time in, in boxing. Okay, so maybe he's at to his time. But anyway, you guys tell me what you think of Jack Catterall beating Josh Taylor in by unanimous decision. Of course, please subscribe. And you guys been counterpunch. Peace.